I, you know, I read romance novels. Mm. I read People magazine. Um, I get, I'm, I'm a, a culture junkie. Um, so I, I think if you're going to stay abreast with the real world, you can't only live in business books. You have to live in a wide variety of stuff. Um, if you're a guy, I would really recommend that you read women's fiction and to understand women better, particularly if your women are your customers, because you might not get it on that. Um, if you're a woman, you might do the opposite and read more guy stuff. Um, if your clients are engineers, go read some pretty heavy duty technology stuff just so you get how their minds work. Um, if you have clients who are farmers, understand what they're doing and find some good books about farmers, about their lives, etc. Because you're going to need to get there as quickly as you can. Welcome to Rochester Business Connections, powered by Balbert Marketing, LLC, where I get the chance to chat with Rochester, New York's very best business owners, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. I am your host, Ben Albert. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, we don't do advertisements. My fee for this show is simple. If you gain value from the episode, personally share with a friend and explain your favorite part. Let's get started. Welcome everybody to Rochester Business Connections. I am here with Kathy Palikoff. Kathy, Hi. what's going on? How are Hi. you? I'm good. I'm good. It's a bright sunshine day and uh, I'm getting to talk to uh, a chill man, young man. So um, I'm very excited to be here and thank you for having me as a guest. Yeah, totally. We, we were saying before we started here, and I say it all the time, this is one of my favorite parts of the day, having these conversations. And you and I both are on a lack of sleep. So we want to bring the energy up. We want to have a good time here. Um, <laughs> Kathy is the owner of Go Fire Starter. She's an entrepreneur. Um, she's ultimately just a winner across the board. And, and you start fires in businesses, right? You do consulting. Um, give us, you know, that that bird's eye view of what you do at Go Fire I sure will. So um, my my title actually is Chief Igniter. Um, nice. That's what I sort of like doing. And and what I do is my company now is really a. a a strategic book development and content development company. So I love words, okay? And I think words are powerful. And I use words to really help my clients um, ignite and fuel and accelerate their dreams and also to spread that spark with other people. So that's sort of what I do is I develop these cool books and there's, they should be all around here. Oh, yeah. this is a, um, a neat one I just did. This is a Rochester guy. Um, and um, this is a book that I helped him write that just came out. And real powerful story. It's all about um, uh, mental illness, trauma, and suicide in law enforcement. Uh, wow. And really, really important. So, um what I get to do is I get to walk into people's lives or their businesses or their companies and their nonprofits and really find the language to move them forward or to move their cause forward. And that's what we did with here in terms of getting people to know about everything that's faced by police officers and in terms of their own mental health. And I get to do that with lots of different people. It's a summary. Does it get it? Yeah, it's incredible, Kathy. And you're a published author yourself, right? I am a published author. Um, my book, you know, I'm not great at marketing myself, and I'm a marketer. Isn't that silly? Oh, wait, look, look, look. There is her book. Uh -huh. uh, so my book is surprisingly called Firestarters. Ignite Your um, Own Life. I have been an entrepreneur for a lot of times after working in the corporate world. And um, 
I own a restaurant in Baltimore, a pizza place called Joe Squared, that we just turned into um, a, a worker-owned co-op, which is a pretty interesting story. Um, but when I kept on trying to do this little brief story about what I did, uh, someone who was my mentor and executive coach turned to me and said, oh, you're a fire starter. And I went, ooh, yeah, I am. And what I do is I'm real good at that igniting things um, and helping other people ignite ideas. So wrote this book, with which is a methodology on how to do that. Uh, came out a couple years ago to some very good reviews. But one of the best parts of this is I got to do what you do which is I got to interview probably about 60 people around the world wow. on what made them a fire starter. And interesting enough, whether or not they were um, an instigator, an initiator, or an innovator. And that was actually something really interesting to find out. I had always thought of myself as a child of the 60s of being an instigator, but I'm actually an initiator. I like to begin things um, the most. That's the most part of my personality. So we had a lot of fun writing that book with two co-authors. And, um, and then I have another one that I'm working on right now that's called uh, uh, Customers or Dogs. Um, and it's really how to apply um, dog training um, and, and looking at breeds on how you interact with customers because a lot of people – don't know what to do with customers. So I have fun. Ton of fun, ton <laughs> of fun. And uh, I I want to pick your brain a little bit. Obviously, an easy answer to this question is read the book, read Firestarters. Um, but let's say I'm pumped up. I've got you know, hundreds, if not thousands and millions of lives. I want to change. I want to impact people. I want my business to expand and grow. But, you know, I wasn't in the Boy Scouts. If I go to start a fire, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I have the will. I have the energy. I have the passion. How do I actually start that fire? Is there any concrete steps for an entrepreneur to get the fire started? Where does it all begin? You know, everybody comes at it at different ways. You know, so some people come in with lots of money. And guess what? It's a lot easier to get a fire started when you have a lot of money. Surprise, surprise, right? <laughs> um, other people have a really great idea, um, but they can't articulate it. So I think the place to start is what I just sort of always do this, this little circle. So this is what the world needs. This is what I got. Where is it intersection place? Mm. You know, because there can, you can have a great idea if there's not a need for it or a market for it, you're not going to get very far. And conversely, if, if there is a need for a market and you don't have it, and particularly you don't have the love and passion of it, don't do it. You know, um, so you really need to find that little place in there. Once you have that place, you need to basically, I think now, and I think it's better than ever before, you need to experiment. You know, so you can spend three years writing your strategic plan, or you can go out there and test the market. And you can talk to customers, and you can, you know, try a little different marketing, different stuff and see what's working and what's not working, um, and be nimble and flexible. Uh, a lot of people start things as side gigs. Um, I didn't, um, I, but I started my business, and my initial, when I left the corporate world and working for large, large agencies, um, my story is, goes like this. I mean, I uh, had really good relationships with my client. I was... Um, out as a consultant, I decided I never wanted to work for anyone again um, because there was too much, not enough building of organizations and not doing good work and too much um, money grubbing and looking at shareholder value. And that's not where I wanted to play. Um, so I got hired to help a client of mine find an agency. Um, so I was like on a, an agency search she told me everything she wanted. 
Um, I went into the bathroom. I came out and I said, I have to de decline this job. I can't do it hmm. um, because you, what you want is too much, but I will start an agency for you. So I started an agency for her and the company was DuPont. So I started with a marquee client and then I built it out from there. Um, so having a marquee client is really good. I also really cut my expenses. I mean, I just didn't spend money, you know, because I assumed I wasn't going to make any um, in a while. So I, and I didn't want that burden. I didn't want to do work I didn't want to do because I was worried about the paycheck. Um, and then I made so many mistakes, you can't believe it. Um, but I didn't sit there and go, gee, is this, is this uh, going to be viable? What's my five-year goal? What's, and what's my exit strategy? I didn't ask any of those questions. Asking exit strategy is probably a good question to ask, but I never did that part either. Yeah. Well, I love the success story. You obviously went in full-fledged. I'm going to get this done because I love it. I'm passionate about it. I want to be an igniter. I, I want to help companies. And you figure it out as you go. You make mistakes. I'm curious because you're full of great stories. Who are some of the fire starters you're working with now? Tell, you know, a story of a current fire starter and what you're doing for their business. Um, one of my new favorite fire starters who um, I'm helping her write a book um, is a person who um, believes in uh, human capital in a big way. And so what she's doing is... Uh, looking at the accounting formulations that account for human capital. So we live in a world where um, if you were to sell your business and you were to get a valuation on it, you could get a valuation on the toilet, but you couldn't get an evaluation on your scientist, right? I mean, if people don't count in that, that equation. She's looking at some really interesting numbers to do that, and that's really, really intriguing to me. Um, I'm also um, working to get um, a, a publisher for uh, a woman who I really love. Um, there's a, um, I worked on a memoir for her, so her name is uh, Joan Pendergrass, and her husband was Teddy Pendergrass. If you're a music person, which I know you are, you know who Teddy Pendergrass was. He was uh, the Black Elvis, he was like the king of R&B uh, in the 60s, and her story is remarkable. It's this beautiful, beautiful love story based on a life for both of them that was filled with lots of trauma. So I wrote that book with her. I was her ghostwriter around her memoir, and now um, I'm trying to help her get that book out into the publishing world. So those are two uh, people. And then I work for a, with a lot of young entrepreneurs, um, mo mainly to help them move forward on how they're thinking. And a lot of, um, I built my business um, from the very beginning, and my business now is different than it was, but the commitment has that at least 50% of my time would be pro bono. So I, um, I take on people and work with people at no cost because I, it gives me joy and I don't need an excessive lifestyle. So um, that's what I do to give back. Everybody does it in a different way. Yeah, and they're all fire starters. I mean, there's a fire starter in everyone. Um, that's actually, I think, one of my biggest findings is that um, I went with the term fire starter, and I think this is really important, is we have this language out there that calls people entrepreneurs, right? And a lot of it's technology-based, but I would meet a person who is a musician, who was a fire starter doing different music or you know, an artist, or I would be um, somebody, a mom or dad or, or home who are advocating for their kids in the school district. I would meet a fire starter in a large corporation who was advocating and trying to make change. So for me, entrepreneur was way too narrow a word. I wanted, 
I wanted a bigger word to talk about these people who make change and care about change. Thank you for highlighting all these fire starters and helping entrepreneurs. Um, ultimately, when when we first met, I don't know if it was corporate world or not, but you were talking about you've done a lot of things specifically for the Rochester community. Let's learn a little bit about your history of what you've done here in Rochester and you know <laughs> some of the organizations you've helped here. Uh, so uh, I'm actually a native Rochesterian. I grew up in the Upper Monroe area and now live in Park Avenue area. And it's really startling to me that I actually live four blocks from where I grow up. Um, I don't usually think of myself as that provincial, but maybe I am. I like familiarity. Um, I've helped a lot of organizations in Rochester. Um, I, um, when Reuters and Books first started, I was helping them out. Um, when Rochester Contemporary was, I was helping them out. Um, the Rochester Music Hall of Fame, I was one of the uh, starting founders on there. So I'm really good at igniting on that. I've been um, active in um, the Jewish Federation uh, of Rochester that does incredibly good work on that. Um, and then uh, through the Entrepreneurs Network 10, um, I've been a coach and a teacher. Now I have a couple other ones that are new that I'm just starting out new relationships with different organizations, but that's a few of them. I mean, I don't have a method to my madness. If something catches my heart and soul, I'm going to give it whatever I can. I love it. You, you say that's a few of them. It sounds like you've helped an incredible amount of Rochester organizations. Because I'm really old. <laughs> If you're around enough, you do all this stuff. But yeah. <laughs> the resume gets longer. Yeah. <laughs> it's known as life. <laughs> so in life, you've obviously been through a lot of just changes in the business landscape, the political landscape. Technology comes about. Now we're in the midst of a virus. Let's talk about, you know, one, two, or however many you'd like of, you know, challenges you've had in building your business and, and becoming, becoming an igniter, becoming a fire starter, what are some of the challenges you've seen in, you know, someone like me who's a younger fire starter, you know, someone who's hoping to ignite the way you do, what can I do to not make that mistake? And, and what can I learn from, you know, what you've learned in the past? You know, that, that's such a, um, a good question because I don't really believe in mistakes. Sure. I believe that you just learn from something. So um, I'm at a stage right now where I'm really, really focused. Um, I, I, and um, so one of the things is I wasn't always focused because I'm an idea person and it, wow, that's cool. Wow. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. Let's go after that. But right. I'm really focused right now around, around words and how to use words um, and, and content in book building and anything else. So I've gotten more focused recently. I've also gotten way more focused on who I work with. Um, so I don't work with assholes anymore. Um, can I use that word on this show? I guess I can. Huh? Um, Go for it. Yeah. I, I, um, um, I work with people who I like and who I care about. Um, so one of the mistakes I have made is working sometimes with people who I didn't have that respect for. The other thing I think I've learned is my own worth. I think so many entrepreneurs undervalue who they are, what they bring to the table, particularly in the service industry. Um, and for me, understanding that, you know, so like when someone, for example, hires you to write, let's take an example, a press release, right? And the question, they said, they, they well, how much is your, your rate? And it, maybe you charge, you know, $100 an hour, right? $100 an hour isn't the right price for a press release because I can do a press release in an hour because I've been doing that 
my so many times and I've right. written it so much. I'm not paying for the 30 years of experience. So I learned a lot of, I made a lot of mistakes around pricing for entrepreneurs. And that's the other thing I would say is sort of the pricing, who you're going to work with. And if you can stay focused, but not stuck. I guess is it, you know, being open to creativity and, and that, but but keeping your eye on the ball. It, wow, I sounded very wise, didn't you, I? You just said a, <laughs> you said a lot of great stuff there. Let, let's try to summarize that because that was a lot of great stuff. So stay focused, but not stuck. Your mistakes aren't mistakes. They're learning opportunities. Know your worth. Um, ultimately, know your value. And don't work with assholes. It yeah. probably has got to take a toll on your emotional health, right? When yeah. you've got a terrible client. Yeah. I can only yeah. imagine. Um, you know what? I actually like all my clients right now. So I'm not you talking know, I, about any of you guys. So That's the other thing I would say, too. When I, um, I don't think that there's this incredible division. And I think we've really seen this in COVID between personal and professional life, right? I mean, all of a sudden you now see people's living rooms and you hear their dogs and their cats. I always sort of did that. I always wanted to be part of my client's life and they wanted to be part of mine. There's a risk involved in that when your clients become your friends, right. but I think the rewards are so much better. Um, uh, you know, when, when your colleagues and your partners and your clients all become part of your circle and your friends, your life gets really richer and your business grows because, you know, you like referring friends, right? So, but I grew up in an era where it was sort of keeping those separate. And I, I love that that's changing and I hope it continues to change more. Yeah, I, um, Kathy, I think I'm going to rent a cat just so I can have one in the background so I look more approachable. <laughs> I like the painting. <laughs> I, um, I'm an avid reader. I wasn't always. It's something that I picked up later in life. I'm curious if you would recommend maybe three books to an avid reader that really wants to ignite their business, ignite their passions and, you know, influence people. Does anything come to mind as to other than fire starters itself by Kathy? Yeah, I wasn't going to recommend that one. Yeah, I would recommend that one. Um, I, um, there's a book, um, I think it's called the art of negotiation. Um, it's, um, by the guy who was the, negotiator for hostage negotiation. Um, I'm not sure if that's the exact name of it. I would, um, I would recommend that one because I think it really uh, helps you uh, have those right kind of uh, conversations and that. And then I guess the other ones, I, you know, I read romance novels. Mm. I read People magazine. Um, I get, I, I'm a, a culture junkie. Um, so I, I think if you're going to stay abreast with the real world, you can't only live in business books. You have to live in a wide variety of stuff. Um, if you're a guy, I would really recommend that you read women's fiction. And to understand women better, particularly if your women are your customers, because you might not get it on that. Um, if you're a woman, you might do the opposite and read more guy stuff. Um, if your clients are engineers, go read some pretty heavy duty technology stuff just so you get how their minds work. Um, if you have clients who are farmers, understand what they're doing and find some good books about farmers, about their lives, etc. Because you're going to need to get there as quickly as you can. So that would be more my category as opposed to sort of specific. I think if you're only living in business books, you're going to be there. Actually, somebody who I really admire um, just sent me this book. Um, and it's called uh, uh, Do Open How a Simple Email Newsletter 
can transform your business by uh, David Hyatt, and she built her whole business around this. And I have I haven't read it yet, but it's sort of like you better read that book. Yeah. Um, for creative people, there's a book coming out by Andrew Foltz, uh, who is a wonderful creative person in town. He's the one who just did the 365 day cartoon challenge, and he's really working on a book on how to um, how to how to make money as a creative, which I think is really difficult, um, and that and all the lessons he's learned and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to look for his name, Andrew Foltz. That book will be good, and he has his cartoon books out right now on. Kindle. It just came out yesterday. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's called 365. So get that book. A cartoon a day for a year, right? So Andrew Foltz, um, great person to bring up because a lot of my network is musicians and artists. And that is a big challenge. How do I monetize my creative passion? How do I turn it into a right. business? So I haven't read it yet, but great recommendations. I I just want to kind of close out with some rapid fire questions, Kathy. We Go do this, it. some easy, easy ors. I I always want... Want, now I feel like I'm on television and I'm like a celebrity. This is really cool. I'm excited. Go, go. This is the celebrity section where when you read a magazine and it just has like very basic uh -huh. things, Kathy likes cats kind of stuff like cool. that. <laughs> um, this is where we just have a little bit of fun. Let's go. Um, coffee or tea? Coffee. Beer or wine? Neither. Neither. Uh, Hard liquor. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, tequila or bourbon? Uh, or vodka or rum? My or gin? mood. If I'm in South, I, I'll probably go bourbon. Cool. Um, Black button, right? Rochester, there you go. Black button bur bourbon. Yep. Support local guys. Uh, are you a cat person or a dog person? Or dog, both? but I have cats, but definitely dogs. Favorite season of the year? Um, probably summer. I like being hot. I'm an igniter, right? Yeah, yeah. Social media. If if I want to follow you and you know make a new friend, where 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 do you like to spend your time? Well, you know, I'm on LinkedIn and I do that a lot. And I like LinkedIn professionally. Um, I'm Facebook, but I think I'm getting off of it. I'm tired of Facebook. Um, so I'm actually looking for. I, I might join the Instagram world, uh, which I haven't really done. But if you want professionally, please uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. I would love to connect with you on there. Do you have a preference, Android or iOS? iOS all the way. Let's do uh, a fav <laughs> favorite thing to eat for breakfast. Leftovers from the night before. There you go. <laughs> What about um dessert? Uh, I'm a birthday cake human being. Yeah, chocolate cake with white frosting. Um, actually, I, to be honest, I've never met a dessert I didn't like. You know, I mean, I'm not a very thin human being, so you can guess that one. Ice cream. Uh, can we just talk about desserts now? Favorite um, ice cream flavor. <laughs> um. Maybe uh, Ben and Jerry's uh, mm. uh, uh, Cherry Garcia. I've gone to ben, bed many a time with Ben and Jerry. So I was going to ask next uh, favorite topping, but when you jump into Ben and Jerry's, it's already got all the toppings in it. Oh, yeah. Do you, ha do you yeah. have a favorite topping, though, if you could uh, pick your own yogurt bar? Um, probably hot fudge. I'm super hungry. I haven't eaten today, so I'm really enjoying the, <laughs> the dessert conversation. Now, if you realize I own a pizza restaurant, so we right. can talk pizza for hours here now, too. So, <laughs> one question on pizza Do the sheet pizzas taste different than when you order a large? Or is that just me? Does the dough taste they, different? They taste horrible. Don't do that. Don't what? order a sheet pizza. I don't know, but my the pizza we make is uh, uh, from a hundred year old sourdough starter that is coal fired, so it's real thin, uh, and it has this sort of tang to it. So I like 
that kind. Or I like a very greasy New York City pizza. But mm. I think the sheet ones, they're doughier. It's sort of like bread with stuff on top of it, which isn't pizza to me. I haven't I mean, met a sheet pizza I liked. It doesn't cook great. Right. I've never yeah. understood why. Yeah. But we digress, we digress, whether it's phone, email, website, social medias, where should we go next? How do we keep in touch with you, Kathy? Um, well, first of all, join me on LinkedIn. Um, I actually do use email, and I like email, and it's Kathy with a K um, and a Y at the end at gofirestarter.com. Um, you can also connect through me through my website, which is gofirestarter.com also. And um, I do answer phone calls, um, but I don't know if I want to, should I give out my phone number or do you have a friendly audience here or am I going to be bombarded with uh, horrible calls? I will what tell you, you there's approximately 20 billion people that watch this show. Maybe 21, 22 billion. 22 um, billion. I haven't checked the metrics yet, so uh, it's kind of up to you. You might get a couple million gonna, phone calls. I'm going to hold back on that unless it's a really good looking, very rich millionaire who I've been married multiple times and happily married right now, but with a good enough offer. Who knows? So, But no, you cannot have my phone number. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, it, listen, guys, if you look up gofirestarter.com, if you, you can reach Google, me. you can reach her there. Take a little more steps. We know if you went on the website, drafted that email, got the number from the website that you actually care. So you can't get the number today, but you can go online and find it there. Um, and if you're a multimillionaire, it looks like Kathy is interested in doing business with you. <laughs> But I would love, actually, um, if you have a story to tell, okay, sure. and an idea, it should be in a book or the content on that, but I would love just to hear about it. And you can, I have a complimentary consulting thing. I'll talk with you for 15 minutes, a half an hour about your book idea. Um, everybody, by the way, should have a book. Um, particularly if you're in business, whether or not you, it's a really powerful marketing tool and does all sorts of stuff. So if you want to talk with me about that or your content, I love new business. I would like you to be my new business. Uh, and I would also like to really, and I mean this very sincerely, I'd like to help in any way I can to make you thrive and if uh, particularly because you're Rochester and I love this city. Absolutely love this city. Kathy, thanks again for coming on. We're seven minutes past the initial time. So I'm going to have to write you a check if we stay any longer. So I'm going to let you go. And uh, it's, it's, it's been fun. It's been fun chatting today. Thank you so much. Take care. Thanks for listening to Rochester Business Connections. Don't forget to share this, rate, and comment on your favorite platform. You can also email me, ben at balbertmarketing.com. Let's connect soon. Until then, keep thriving, everyone.